Welcome to Trigonometry. We're going to begin with a discussion about radians and radian measure. And by the end of this, you should be able to understand that the radian measure of an angle is the length of the arc on the unit circle formed by that angle. Let's begin by talking about what an angle is how it's measured. Now, an angle is formed by joining the endpoints of two half lines called rays. The side that you measure from is called the initial side and the side that you're measuring to is called the terminal side. And normally angles move in a counterclockwise rotation from initial to terminal side. If they move clockwise in the direction of the hands of a clock, we call that clockwise rotation. Angles measured counterclockwise, however, are given a positive sign, and angles that are clockwise are given a negative sign. So the red angle here is positive, the counterclockwise. Now we're going to use Greek letters to signify angles. The ones you're going to use in this class, alpha and beta and theta. But you can also see gamma, phi, and delta. Now if we put an angle into the coordinate system, then we can really start doing a lot of with it. The standard position with the initial side on the positive x-axis and vertex at the origin are the two things that signify that it is in standard position. Okay, and how about this angle? What quadrant is it going to be in? Well, because its terminal side is in quadrant 2, it's a quadrant 2 angle. Now what about this angle? Since its terminal side is in quadrant 4, we call it a quadrant 4 angle. If the terminal side is along an axis, it's called a quadrantal angle. Now we're going to be using two different measures of angles in this class, degrees and radians. You're already familiar with degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle, and so the circle is divided into degrees, 360 of them making a circle. Well, what about this angle? Well, you all know that that's a 90 degree angle uh, if we go counterclockwise from initial to terminal side. That is one fourth of the way around a circle, or 90 degrees. If we go one fourth, however, in a clockwise direction, we would have a negative 90 degree angle. Now, here's really the focus today. Another way to measure angles is using what's called radians. If you're given a circle of radius r, with the vertex as the center of the circle, arc length formed by intercepting the circle with the sides of the angles is the same as the radius. In other words, the radius is the same as the arc length. That's equal to one radian. And it doesn't matter what the size of the circle is. If the arc length equals one radius, that is one radian. So the angle that you see here that has an arc length of r and a radius of the same r is equal to one radian. Now, radians versus degrees. Well, a circle contains two pi radians. A circle also contains 360 degrees. So if we cut that in a half, 180 degrees would be equal to pi radians. So one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians, or one radian is 180 divided by pi. So to convert degrees into radians, we're going to multiply by pi over 180 because pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, and to convert radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 divided by pi. So let's convert 30 degrees to radians. So 30 degrees, we're going to multiply it by pi over 180, and that gets rid of the degrees, and that gives you pi over 6 radians. We can leave the pi in and just call it pi over 6 radians, which we're going to do a lot in this class, or you can use the pi button on your calculator and get rid of the pi symbol, and it's approximately 0.52. So now let's go back the other way. Let's convert pi over 3 radians to degrees. Pi over 3 radians times 180 degrees divided by pi radians. And again, we're putting radians in the denominator because that's what we're trying to get rid of. The pi's actually cancel out here, as do the radians, and you're left with 60 degrees. So pi over 3 is the same as 60 degrees. Let's look at some critical angles that you really need to know and pretty much commit to memory. And those are the angles between 0 and 90 degrees and 180 degrees. 30 degree angle is equal to pi over 6 radians. 30 degrees is a sixth of the way to 180, so pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees. 45 degrees is a fourth of the way to 180, a fourth of the way to pi, so it's pi over 4 radians. 60 degrees is a third of the way to 180, it's a third of the way to pi, so it's pi over 3 radians. And 90 degrees is halfway to 180, so it's pi over 2 radians. And very importantly, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, and that's important to know for that conversion factor as well. 
one of the applications of ratings is to compute arc length. So if we look at an entire circle, the arc length of the entire circle is 2 pi times the radius. That comes from the circumference. Now, what if we want to just find the arc length of part of a circle? The arc length of a part of a circle would be 2 pi r times the fraction of a circle that that arc is, described by theta divided by 2 pi. That is the fraction of 2 pi that the angle makes. The arc length then becomes s, and the 2 pi's will cancel out and you're left with r times theta, and that's the formula for the arc length of a circle. If we take that and break it down, s is the arc length, r is the radius, and theta is the measure of the angle, and it's critical that you do that in radians. That measure must be in radians in order to use this formula. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a circle with a radius of 3 meters and a central angle of 0.52 radians. And we want to find that length of the r in black, which is equal to r times theta, so that's 3 times 0.52, it's going to be 1.56 meters. Let's look at a more practical example where we have it in degrees. If the measure's in degrees, we've got to convert it into radians first. So CD has a radius of 6 centimeters, and you want to make an, a label for part of the disk covering 120 degrees of the arc. Well, how many radians is 120 degrees? 120 degrees, multiply it by the conversion factor. We're going to divide by degrees to get rid of degrees. You wind up with 2 pi over 3 radians. Now, we can use that now to find the arc length of that 120 degree arc, which is r times theta. But theta is not in degrees anymore. It's in radians. 6 centimeters times 2 pi over 3 radians. That equals 4 pi centimeters exactly or approximately 12.6 centimeters. Let's look at the area of a sector of a circle. So now instead of length, we're looking at area, the area of that red shape you see. Well, the area of a whole circle we know is pi r squared. So we can get the area of a sector by multiplying that pi r squared by the fraction of a circle that that sector takes up, which is theta divided by 2 pi. 2 pi is the whole circle, theta is the part. The pi's cancel out, and what you're left with, the formula for the area of the sector of a circle, is 1 half r squared theta. Let's take that and use it. Again, theta must be in radians. So if it's in degrees, you've got to convert it first. So, so let's look at an example. Let's find the area of the sector of a circle if the radius is 3 feet and the angle is 50 degrees. Now first we've got to convert it to radians, multiplying it by that pi over 180. Again, we're trying to get rid of degrees, so we'll divide by 180 and it gives you 0.873 radians. So we put that into the area of the sector formula, that's a half times the radius of 3 squared times the angle in radians, which is 0.873, which gives us 3.93 square feet. Another application of angles is linear and angular velocity. Linear velocity is, just like any velocity, it's distance divided by time. It's the linear distance an object travels divided by time. That's no different if it's on a circle. The linear speed, or velocity, is equal to distance divided by time. Angular velocity is the amount of turn an object makes in a given time. So instead of distance being divided by time, angular velocity, which we're going to call omega, is equal to theta, the rotation, divided by time. So the definition of linear velocity is equal to s over t, if we're talking about in a circle. If we take that and we use the arc length formula, s equals r theta, and substitute that for s, we get v equals r theta over t. Linear velocity in terms of angular velocity, how they're related, the linear velocity is equal to r times the angular velocity. Let's look at an example on a, a rotating carousel. If there are two points, A and B, and A is on the outer edge of the carousel and B is somewhere in the, towards the center, they rotate one full cycle. Since they rotated one full cycle of the carousel, the time taken by them is the same. So they covered the same amount of angular distance, which is either 2 pi or 360 degrees, one revolution, within the same amount of time. Thus, they showed they had the exact same angular speed. But is the linear speed the same? And the answer is no. And if you've ever been on a merry-go-round or anyone park, you know that you're going to go a lot faster on the outside than you are on the inside. And that's linear speed. So angular speed's the same, but linear speed's different. So it's because the length those two points traveled are definitely not the same, whether it's on the carousel or at the park. The linear length or the distance is not the same because 
length is equal to 2 pi times radius, and the radius is different for point B than it is for point A. And since the radius is smaller for point B, the linear speed is going to be different because it's traveling a smaller length in a given amount of time. A, however, has a bigger radius, bigger linear speed. Let's look at an example. Let's take a satellite traveling in a circular orbit around the Earth at approximately 1,800 kilometers of altitude above the surface. It takes 2.5 hours to make an orbit. The radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. We're going to have to add those two together to get the total radius of the satellite. Find the linear speed in kilometers per hour, and then find the distance the satellite travels in 3.5 hours. Well, the radius the satellite is actually at from the center of the Earth is equal to 8,200 kilometers because it's 6,400 plus 1,800. The time it takes to travel is 2.5 hours. So let's find the linear speed of the satellite. We know that linear speed is equal to s divided by t or r theta divided by t. Since r is 8,200 kilometers, theta is 2 pi because it's making one entire revolution in 2.5 hours and t is 2.5. So therefore, the velocity is 6560 pi kilometers per hour, which is approximately 20,609 kilometers every hour, the linear speed of the satellite. The approximate distance it goes in 3.5 hours, 20,609 kilometers per hour equals the distance it travels divided by 3.5 hours. When we multiply to solve for s, we're going to get 73,132 kilometers that it travels. Let's look at a pulley example. A small pulley that's 6 centimeters in diameter, the one on the left, is, be, is connected by a belt to a larger pulley. So, and the small pulley is turning at 120 RPM, which stands for revolutions per minute. Find the angular velocity of the small pulley and the linear velocity of a point on the edge of the small pulley. Let's look at the angular velocity first. Angular velocity is the angle it travels in a given amount of time. We're not giving it in degrees or radians. We're actually giving it in rotations. So we're going to have to convert that to radians. So 120 rotations in one minute to pi uh, radians per rotation. That's going to get rid of rotations. We multiply that by one minute being 60 seconds because we want this to wind up in seconds. Notice that rotations cancel out. Minutes cancel out. We're left with the angular velocity being 4 pi radians per second. Let's look at linear velocity. Now that we know that angular velocity is 4 pi radians per second, linear velocity is equal to r times omega. So the linear velocity is 3 centimeters times that angular velocity of 4 radians per second, and we get a linear velocity of 12 pi centimeters per second.